our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam mubarak ala khayri khalqillahi ajma'in. Nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mansara ala nahjihi ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd. Indeed, all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may the peace and blessings be upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is there anything wrong with this one? This one's better, no? Okay. <coughs> and may the peace and blessings be upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It's been a while since I've been to the masjid here and the masjid for me has a lot of memories and uh, it's a good opportunity for me to see faces I haven't seen for a long time and I must say that uh, this is one of the uh, after Makkah and Medina and my own masjid of course I have to put that there it's one of the most beloved masjids to me and may Allah Azawajal reward all the brothers and sisters who have uh, put an, an enormous amount of effort to making today's uh, event possible. Now, there are many organizations that are, are there to help the brothers and sisters, Muslims generally. But I was just discussing today actually that <coughs> the atrocities that are, are going on in, in Syria, for example, okay, and also the difficulties and, you know, the problems that have been going on in Palestine for, you know, two generations and the starvation that occurs and difficulties that occur in, in Africa for example and atrocities that go on in, in Burma and is it until now really that in this day and age in 2013 that you still have these atrocities going on you still have people suffering to such an extent Especially when we're talking about the suffering that is, you know, directly uh, on Muslims. That why is it that, and we're not questioning the qadr of Allah Jalla wa ala, I don't mean it from that perspective. I mean for us to question ourselves, that really what is my part in trying to resolve this particular situation, trying to help the situation. And that is it from time to time when I meet people, is it, am I going to still have the attitude and still have the, the phrase that, that we will do something and we'll rely on somebody else. Now, Hugs is one of those organizations which is really, is a, is a unique organization. It's truly unique. I'm not here to um, go through the history of Hugs. You know what Hugs is about. It's about helping families who have been affected by what represents oppressive laws. Now the organization itself is, is going through a difficult time and we're talking about literally the organization being here today and maybe not being here tomorrow. That's at the level that the organization is currently at. We're not talking about, Alhamdulillah, the organization is moving and everything is fine, please give us some more money because we want to help the children and the mothers. We're talking about the actual organization being here tomorrow. And Allah Jalla wa'ala has blessed you to come here this evening and the number that we have here. Because to be honest with you, the importance of this project probably needs a masjid two or three times the size of this to cater for the amount of people that really should be coming. I don't think it's a lack of people being unaware. The event has been publicized. People know about hugs. So why is it? And this is why I say that may Allah reward you for coming. Why is it that people don't come? And why is it that we find ourselves the number that we have here? When in fact the number should be, as I mentioned, much more than we have now. But nonetheless, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being, uh, giving us the opportunity for us to be here together now. 
and whatever the outcome is that we hope to see the fruits of that on the day of judgment because we're talking about one of those projects which is completely unique is it that we need to bring a small child or do we need to bring the mother to really explain the you know difficulties and trials that they go through for the Muslims actually to wake up and realize the importance of such a project do we have to bring the child and say well, he's, got, he's got holes in his shoes and that the mother can't afford to buy any more shoes for him or she can't afford to send him to school are these the kind of examples that we need to bring forth to really wake up the Muslims and say that you know there's obligations that are upon you and the situation is such that I really fear and we should all fear the situation that we are living in because living in such an environment like this in which the net is is closing in and closing in and closing in that if we don't do something about it that one day you will be consumed within that net and you'll be relying on another person after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that once upon a time once upon a time that there used to be an organization once upon a time and it used to help out brothers and sisters and children for people in your situation but for whatever reason the Muslims really weren't uh, convinced enough to really support such an organization so unfortunately it went underground and it disappeared now we're just involving ourselves in trying to get the brothers and sisters to bring some money here and there just to help out individuals I say what an opportunity it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to come here and to participate in such a noble effort because if you can imagine the difficulty that any one person that they go through and at that time that they will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sincerity of their supplication for the people who help them who knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give you in this life and in the hereafter but for many of us we haven't tasted true difficulty but a person who's, trace, who's tasted true difficulty and that they, when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you imagine the sincerity and the reliance that they have because they have nothing else except Allah Jalla wa'ala and that they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and when that help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the means of a of a charity organization or of a donation of a particular individual when they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you or bless your family members can you imagine what Allah Jalla wa'ala may give to you a woman she came to the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she had two young children very small children and she was asking for some provisions the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not there Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and she was there so she said to the woman to wait and to look for something so she could bring it for her Aisha radiallahu anha what did she bring this woman does anybody know three dates this was in the house of khayru khalqillah this was in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she bought her, she bought her three dates this woman she gave one date to one child and the other date to the other child she got the other date split it in half and gave it to her two children Aisha radiallahu anh, amazed of the compassion and mercy of this mother to her child when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned that Aisha radiallahu anh, felt compelled to tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this incident that this sadaqah, this charity that Aisha radiallahu anha gave this needy poor sahabiyya who knows what Aisha radiallahu anha would receive for that but that what the mother did for her own child was a reason for her being saved from the hellfire 
And that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was he reminded Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that save yourself from the nar save yourself from the hellfire walaw bi shiqqi tamra even if you have to split the date half a date you give that in sadaqah save yourself from the nar which the nar is made up from the fuel of men and stones that you save yourself below the shiqqi tamra that every single one of us when we come to the masjid and we want to be in the first line we want to attain righteousness we want to attain birr and a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you will never attain birr that you will never attain righteousness hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun until you give that what is beloved to you len Allah jalla says len tanalu albirr that you will never attain or reach this station of albirr until you get, give from that what you love not from that what is excess that what you don't need no, but the secret here is from that what you love that what your heart is attached to and only when you give that then you will attain righteousness a well known sahabi radiyallahu anhu whose name was Talha that he had a well known hadiqa a well known piece of land in which that the people and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would visit and they would spend their time and he was a person who wanted to attain righteousness when he heard about this verse that he came immediately to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that i have a hadiqa that i have a garden and it is the most beloved of my wealth it is the most important of my wealth wa atasaddaqu biha and i will give it as a charity because i want to attain righteousness so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him why don't you give it to the poor of your family or the you need of your family members he said i want to give it for everybody to benefit Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu Did he die in the year 9 after Hijrah? Did he die before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? No. He died about 2 and a half or so years after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu did not therefore die of starvation or shelter dip deprivation in the 9th year after Hijrah. when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he asked the companions to give what they could for the battle of tabuk and when umar radiyallahu anhu came and gave half of his wealth that he found that abu bakr radiyallahu anhu gave everything did you hear that abu bakr radiyallahu anhu died of starvation because of that incident no did you hear that abu bakr radiyallahu anhu had nothing was in need begging in the streets no That when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, "What did you leave for your family, Ya Abu Bakr?" "Taraktu lahum Allahu wa Rasuluh." That I left for them Allah and His Messenger. That for many of us, that we have become attached to these worldly possessions to a level which you're 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 in denial. That I'm not attached to the dunya. I'm not attached to my wealth and this and that and the other. even though that there are people in front of me that i know are more need than i and that if i give it won't break the family structure that i have but as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as-sadaqatu burhan that giving charity is a proof it is a proof whether that you are truthful to your statement or not that if you are attached to this dunya that you will give a small amount and that you would withhold when you know that you can give more but the shaitan and your desires and yourself you will make up many many more excuses to spend that money on other things that that charity when it is to be given it is to be given you know when you are listening to a fundraiser and you hear about the project and you're convinced about the project 
Maybe this happened once before. I know this happened to me. But I'm convinced by the project and the standing order goes through. The sheets and the pens that go round. And then there's who will give a thousand pounds? Who will give a five hundred pounds? And you know you have the amount. You know you have the amount. But you don't have it with you right now. But you're fully convinced I'm going to give that five hundred pounds. And I'm going to give that a thousand pounds. But you don't have it at that particular time. Then you go home. For some reason the shaitan has convinced you a thousand pounds is a lot of money to give away. Or that money is that boost and the energy that you had at that particular time is somehow gone. That is why when that time for charity, that time for sadaqah, when it comes, by whatever means, I will take that opportunity. Because maybe in an hour's time, maybe in 15 minutes time, or when the event is over, I'm not going to have that same feeling. And I end up not giving. Until majur al niyyah you'll have an, inshallah, a reward for that intention at that time. But the fact is that you didn't give it that hour later or that day later. So when the opportunity comes to you, inshallah ta'ala, very shortly, and you are asked to give something for this organization, and I challenge you to find an organization which does the work that it does. I challenge you. When that opportunity comes to you for you to give, that do not think twice. Do not think twice about supporting such a noble and important project. To the extent that the obligation, it, it falls on some of us. The obligation falls on some of us. It may not be an obligation for every single individual to financially give, but that there are a certain amount of people, I'm sure, that the obligation is upon you to give. Don't be from those people whom that it is an obligation upon you and that you turn away from such a noble and rewarding for you. Because don't ever think that when you give that there is a deficiency and I don't have any more now. Because when you give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace and give you something better. There's that leap of faith that you should have in Allah azawajal. That gap that I will give and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give something back to me. But sometimes we need that assurance that when I give, am I really going to get something back? When you make that business transaction with somebody. That if I give you 50 pounds as part of the business, or I give you 10,000 pounds, are you sure I'm going to make 2.5%? Are you sure I'm going to make 5% or 10%? Are you sure? You can promise me that. Only when you get that promise, and if I don't get it back, you'll, you'll give that money back to me, right? Then I'll give. But there are times, especially things like this, it is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fail his promise to you when he says that when you give, he'll give you something back? Do you doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he won't give it to you? So when you give, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase your reward tenfold, seven hundredfold and more, do you doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give that to you? So when that opportunity comes to you, brothers and sisters, don't hold yourselves back. لَا تُحْرِمْ نَفْسِكْ don't hold yourself, don't deprive yourself of the ajr and the opportunity that has been given to you this evening. Because how many people haven't come, but you have come. And there's a reason that you have come. You came for, an in, your intention was what? Just to receive some ma'lumat, to hear some stories which will affect your heart and subhanallah and mashaAllah. No, you should have come here to participate. And that your participation doesn't stop today. Rather your participation in hugs and other projects like this will continue because you know the obligation which is upon you. The obligation towards your brothers and sisters who are in need and children who are in need. Because Ya'lam Allah, Allah knows that a day may come to you that you will be tried with your family, with your children and that you will depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say where are my brothers and where are my sisters? And you will be reminded the day that you forgot about your brothers and sisters. And this is a reminder to you today that you are left alone. That the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he gives people tests. And when those tests, when it comes to you, when Allah jalla wa'ala gives you his wealth, because the whole dominion, al-mulku lillah, 
it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it doesn't belong to you and that small tiny amount of wealth has been given to you that you are going to be tested with it are you going to place it where Allah jalla wa ala has shown you this is where you should place it or are you going to withhold it in yourself and say I'm not going to give that oh Allah you gave it to me and I'm going to withhold it I know that you are testing me with this wealth but I won't give it when a day will come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Surah Al-Munafiqun a day will come when you will wish that you can give another charity but you will never be able to come back and never give a charity or even to say a tasbihatun wahida you will never be given the opportunity just to say subhanallah so don't have that regret and don't have that time in your grave when you say I wish I gave I wish I'd done and I wish and I wish and I wish you're not in that position now where you're wishing for something that will never come back to you you are breathing and your blood is throwing th flowing through your veins and you have that opportunity to remember Allah to make dua for your brothers and sisters wherever they may be and if you can financially help them then you will do so When you will beg Allah, لَوْلَ أَخَرْتَنِي يَوْمٍ Just you delayed me for a day. That time will never come back to you. So thank Allah. I say thank Allah, thank Allah that He guided you to come here tonight. And He has given you this such a beautiful opportunity to demonstrate your Iman. These aren't false promises brothers. What I'm saying to you is not false kalam. It's not from myself. This is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your iman in front of Allah Jalla wa Ala. I don't promise you Jannah. I don't promise you the reward. The reward is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. A person may give and may be punished for that. You may give something tonight and you are punished for that. Why? Because you are showing off in front of other people. Look at me, I am giving. Whereas another person they give and they are rewarded to an amount that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows what Allah Jalla wa Ala will give to that person. So brothers and sisters, I say thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us this opportunity tonight to come here and to demonstrate and show Allah subhanahu wa that we have really an op a responsibility towards our brothers, our sisters and our fellow children. They are our, 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 abna, our children, our sons and our daughters. And that we will not forsake them. And that we will support each other no matter what. And that we will not be afraid no matter what. That you gave to what organization? You gave to whom? I gave for my brothers and my sisters. I have no fear for those people who don't agree with this particular project. You're breaking no laws. You have done nothing wrong. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts to such projects. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless such projects. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Reward all of the brothers and sisters who are involved in organizations and such organizations like this, helping our brothers and sisters and children who are in dire need. May Allah forgive us all.